Well, welcome to Technology and Education Today. I'm Richard Smith. And I'm Caroline Crawford. And today we're talking about El Paso Independent School District in the state of Texas. Yay, Texas! And they've done something very interesting, or they're about to embark on something very interesting. Well, Tim Holt is the Director of Technology over there, correct? Yes, Tim. He's awesome. <laughs> Adore that man. He is so cool. And he was on um, interviewed in the news the other day, and he discussed uh, a, a, an idea to make the school district go paperless, or uh, without textbooks, traditional textbooks, and they're going to use uh, computers instead. Now, when you say traditional textbooks, you're just talking about print text and some pictures. There's Books. no multimedia. There's no anything additional extra. No online right, quizzes, any of that. Straight textbook, tra open it traditional, up. Traditional text up, textbooks, paper pe textbooks, those things that you pile into your kid's uh, knapsack, uh, backpack. Break their backs, they, yes. And they march to school like 30, 40 pounds of books. But, but the horrible thing about those textbooks is that they're only um, adopted by different school districts every five to ten years. So there's no easy change. Once they're printed, they're printed, they're printed. And there's no revision to incorrect information in there, nor updates. And you have to buy a new book every couple of years. But now with the digital textbooks, it's very different. Well, it depends what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, I, what I think El Paso is going to do, at least uh, what uh, Tim explained, is that they are going to uh, purchase uh, most likely a Chromebook, which is a type of uh, computer that connects only with the uh, internet. You really can't store information. So you can, it's you not can a store production. Information, but you can't, you can't uh, put a, a, a uh, you cannot put an application on the computer, a separate application, software application. So, so for a Chromebook, it's only inter really only internet based. It's not a production oriented. Right, similar like it's similar to an iPad in in. In that in that sense, but in any event, what happens is an iPad. You can have different apps in production. Well, certainly, and you can have different apps on. Uh, you can use different as software applications on a Chromebook. You call two different things, but they, but they certainly have the same bottom line. You're you're using it to uh, solve a problem of one sort or another, so that, uh, in effect, you could put several textbooks that formerly had been paper onto. Uh, a Chromebook or, or an iPad. So the 20 pounds that you used to lug around is now a nice little maybe at most three to five pound tablet. No, those tablets... Those tablets are gone. That's the old days. <laughs> no, the, the, uh, the, uh, an iPod I think weighs about... iPad? iPad weighs about uh, 16 ounces or something like that or uh, maybe 20 ounces and the um, the uh, Chromebook weighs, I think, three pounds. So that's that's. See, I was right. Three to five pounds. He's trying to make me look stupid. It's that. <laughs> it's that. Two, Not that difficult, but that, still. <laughs> that two five pounds. At any rate, uh, and on that you could load several textbooks if you wanted to put textbooks on them, or you could put in a number of different software uh, or research Packages. sites yeah. uh, on there as sites for um, where there are resources of information and if you were a, a skillful, skillful teacher or your curriculum and instruction department might do this on a district level, uh, you would put, just have that information held on the, uh, on the uh, technology device that you're using. When I say technology device, it's either a Chromebook or an iPad or some other sort of a tablet. And it, it, in this way, remember when you talked briefly about when we started that when a book is on paper, you cannot change the information in it. Absolutely, you're stuck with that, no matter what revisions to the understanding. Well, occur. given the the text or errors. Well, I guess there's going to have to be some sort of mod textbook modification, uh, approval modification process. But you could update those textbooks absolutely uh, online. With the only problem would be the people with the people who actually have to change the content. But the content, instead of remaining static for five to ten years, could change on a monthly or yearly uh, basis. So uh, how, you're talking about textbooks on a tablet. Um, is it like if you have a Kindle or some other type of Barnes & Noble bookstore type digital environment where you rent books and then they disappear after a while? Well, that's to be determined. But in essence, that's... that's well, I mean, are the students maintaining, if, if it's a Chromebook, that, as you mentioned, um, 
do they maintain the Chromebook throughout their high school career or junior high career? Or, and the textbooks that's come to, and go? That's, that's going to depend on the district to district right. implementation. But the idea of a textbook on a computer, that's the most basic level that you can, you can get. The simplest level of, and a type of implementation that would not be too difficult for teachers to do because all it really is doing is it's simplifying the use of textbooks for teachers. It has the advantage... And not breaking the poor child's back. Right. It has the advantage, though, of being able to, uh, in the instance uh, of El Paso ISC, where they're starting with science textbooks, you can now put live action science demonstrations on that textbook and allow... How the, cool is that? Yes, and allow the students to manipulate data up to a certain level. So that mm -hmm. makes it uh, cool. Uh, you can visit different Video sites. Video simulations. Yes, you can visit different sites using, mm -hmm. depending on your on the uh, resource that you're using. And, uh, and what a nice change. An, at, the an, at the beginning of the year, you just check out the Chromebook. At the end of the year, you don't have to worry about whether or not the child's bringing the textbook back and being screamed at mm -hmm. by your administration. Where is this book? Why did you lose a book? I didn't lose a book. What are you talking about? Well, you could, so, you could lose the Chromebook. Easier. You <laughs> could lose the Chromebook, but you still have the textbook. You can just give them another Chromebook, and within a day's period, mm -hmm. they're back yes. up and running. And, you know, an interesting thing is that it would be the consideration of the um, of the maintenance of these of these uh, of these uh, hardware items. It has the potential to be a nightmare. <laughs> on the other hand, based on my personal experience with the Houston Independent School District, I can tell you that in 1983 we had a project called Computers Can, where we placed computers in the homes of Title I students <laughs> with their parents. We trained parents and students at the same time to use these computers, and they received several software packages, computer-assisted instruction software packages, and uh, they used them together at the home, in their home. Not one of those computers was lost. In addition, I think around 1990, I ran a project in, in Houston ISD with one of the uh, uh, high schools, Davis High School, where we placed a set of um, those Radio Shack, I forgot the numbers now, but they were essentially a keyboard and a word processor uh, uh, combined, but that's all they did was word processing, and they were placed with an English teacher, and uh, those, the students loved them, they took them from class to class and took notes, and they And amazingly, they never disappeared. <laughs> that's true, they did not disappear. So the track record is good for, for placing these types of devices in the hands of, uh, of and students. And accidents will happen, I mean, people are people, accidents will happen, but you still have the opportunity to quickly shift over to a new... Uh, well, Chromebook is well, what we're talking in, in about for these, this district. Yes, in, in essence, I think what will happen was, will be rather than the school district, districts carrying a, an insurance policy for the Chromebooks or whatever they buy, they will self-insure. In, in and that would mean that they would have a reserve of money where they would buy additional Chromebooks. And when this Chromebook went down or if it was lost or broken, uh, they would resupply that student with the... Um, with a, a new Chromebook. Now what I'm interested in, this is what El Paso is doing right now. Great idea, finally. We're getting For to this point. For 2014, 15. For many different school districts. Yay, mm -hmm. we're getting to the point where they are shifting over. And um, But at what point, I'm interested in finding out, if I have a preference for my own tablet, at what point can I use my own tablet and maintain my own tablet that I want to use and then have the technology pushed to my tablet. For example, if El Paso has an app and I install the app on my machine, they know I'm a student, I log in, mm -hmm. and all of that information is pushed to me. And then they, it's just cut off at the end of the year. Might that be a possibility? I'm curious to ask Tim Holt about Yo, that. Well, that's, that's the bring your own device Absolutely, uh, yeah. concept. So it's great and that they're making the technology available, but why shouldn't I be able to bring my own? Uh, and it's merely a, a question. I'm not saying, ah, oh, horrible. Well, no, no, great idea. I'll tell you, what if I want my I'll, own? I'll, I, will t I, will, I will tell you. And the answer to that is that in order to control the situation and make certain that, these comp that everybody's computer is running correctly at the same time in the class so that the teacher has no problem with maintaining the computers in the class and, make certain, and, and knows reasonably certain that everything is going to run as that teacher has planned, then each student would receive, should be using the same computer. And in the instance of El Paso ISD, 
apparently they're going to the extent that they're buying these computers to, for, ensure. to ensure that that happens. Where you see your own... From that standpoint, well, I understand right, it. Where you see the bring your own device idea, that generally comes from school districts where the school district does not have the money to provide computers for each student if it's a one-to-one -one implementation. Oh, I don't know about that. So, that may be the case, but I don't know about that because so, I prefer my own technology. Well, you may prefer your own technology, and you may have the m enough money to buy your own technology. Not so much. I'm an academic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about a parent. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. So... Let's try to generalize. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> so, so in other words, you have, if you have a school where maybe you have some students who, whose parents don't have a lot of money, they can't buy a and super device. And that's where device. the Chromebooks come from. And, so, and, you, and then you, in the same class, you have a student that marches in with a, with a book that will connect them with Mars, a computer that will connect them with Mars. And it, it makes, makes for all sorts of, uh, makes for issues, all sorts of yeah. issues and problems. But and we still have that baseline, like what El Paso is doing with the Chromebooks or whatever tablet mm -hmm. they finally choose. I believe it's a Chromebook. They still have that baseline. You ha must meet the baseline. Right, but, that's, but you know what? All of, all of that is a different conversation. Absolutely, but it's an interesting, intriguing, and I know you're going to say, eh, it's a different conversation. We're not having it now. No, what I'm going to say is the, <laughs> is the fewer problems for teachers that we make with True. technology, the more the technology will be adopted and the better off all students will be. For but it's not about the technology. For technology and education today, I'm Richard Smith. <laughs> and I'm Caroline Crawford. Bye.